Welcome to Painting Joy with me, Tom Ross. Today we're going to be painting a wonderful natural landscape that'll just tickle your insides. So let's get right to it, shall we? We apply our natural paint and we're just going to start by making some nice, wonderful trees right on our landscape. So we start to paint natural trees. You just stroke the brush in, giving that nice flavor. And that nice strong tree that just stands in the distance and makes all the birdies just so happy to see it and want to build their nests in it. As you apply the paint, make happy pond where the ducks and the quack around, the quackety quack in the nice pond. So we put a little brush here, a little bushes, a little place where some logs could be, where some foxes and little birdies and some other wonderful creatures hide in the meadow, run out, maybe a little bit of frogs on lily pads. And finally, we want to finish up. We're going to be adding some more trees because nature just loves trees. They're just so nice, so tall, so woody. And then you apply this. And when you're finally done, you'll have your wonderful portrait of nature right there. And I thank you again for joining me with the painting joy here with me, Tom Ross. Welcome to Music Detectives. First, I would like to thank Tom Ross for helping out with this episode. Hope you all learn to bring joy to your painting. Now, speaking of painting, we turn to a portrait, a portrait of a fool, Conway's new album. There's lots of vinyl in this release, so let's get right to it. Now it's time for a Music Detectives detailed inspection. First up on the list of singles to look at from the Portrait of a Fool album is What a Dream, or Oh, What a Dream. If you notice, it says Lowe's. Well, the songs for this album got an early start. The full album comes out in 1962, but What a Dream was released in 1960. It had to wait two years for a place on an album. What a Dream was written by Chuck Willis, who sang What Am I Living For? which Conway covered and sang on his Greatest Hits album. Now Chuck's version of What Am I Living For would go on to number 9 on the pop charts and number 1 on R&B in 1958. Oh What a Dream was sung by Ruth Brown, and in June 1954, it reached number 1 on the R&B charts. Patti Page would also release the song in August of 1954, and it would reach number 10 on the pop charts. The flip side is Tell Me One More Time, which doesn't find its way onto any album, but was a part of the Seaberg jukebox set, which we talked about in a previous video. Neither song charted, even though Cashbox thought both were winners. Notice the WC in the Dead Wax? It's for HV Waddle Company in Burbank, California, where this record was pressed. Up next is The Next Kiss is The Last Goodbye. If you've been watching along, we saw this song appear in advertisements with the Rock and Roll Story album in early 1961. Well, finally, now we see it make its way onto an album. Now, looking at the cover, if you're experiencing deja vu, you should be. We've seen the same cover before with C'est C'est Bon. Okay, some of the colors changed, but it's the same picture of Conway. So the goal wasn't really to make something different. Because if we look at the back... We, once again, are greeted with the same design as the back of C'est C'est Bon and the Grays hits picture sleeves. Looking at the vinyl, K12998, we see our ice cream cone with a bar through it mark on the dead wax, letting us know it was pressed in Bloomfield, New Jersey. The next kiss would be a billboard pick in March of 61, calling it an appealing dramatic theme. It would also be another link in the chain as Cashbox's Pick of the Week. The next kiss would reach its highest position on the Billboard charts 
at number 72 on April 17th, 1961. Funny enough, the song would also peak at number 72 on Cashbox a month later on May 6th of 1961. The next kiss would also be tied in with the Greatest Hits album. In the top photo, he's with David Rothfield, who worked with EJ Corvette department stores. Now here's a picture of the Springfield store from the parking lot. The whole chain would go out of business in 1980. Have you ever been in Corvette? Do you have any pictures of the inside? Or maybe you were there the day Conway was? Let me know in the comments below. The flip side is Man Alone, which beat Next Kiss in the album race. It appeared on the previous Conway Twitty Touch album that we looked at in our last video. With Next Kiss on the charts, we got a special disc jockey record. Okay, so you may be wondering, who is that holding a record in their hands? Sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. What's going on? He's been around for quite a while. MGM Records brochures from the early 50s had our cartoon friend. He does have similar features to another MGM cat, the Pink Panther. I wonder if they're cousins. But other than seeing him appear, there isn't anything I could find on the World Wide Web that gives more of a story to this cartoon fellow. He's a cat dressed like an orchestra conductor. Or I should say, cat doctor. If you have any more information or ideas, leave them in the comments below. A Million Teardrops, written by Fred Carter Jr. Haven't heard of Fred Carter? He was on the Louisiana Hayride. But more importantly to our story, Carter toured and became lifelong friends with Conway Twitty. Here, Conway records one of his early songwriting efforts. Oh, and he is the father of country superstar Deanna Carter. The song got its own special disc jockey record, but it never did get onto the charts. Despite the Cashbox reviews stating that it and I'm in a blue blue mood sound like smashes. Picture me this. On this side, the It's Driving Me Wild font is large and in charge. If we flip it over, Sweet Sorrow gets the top billing in the larger font. Think you've seen this picture before? Well, you have. If you have Conway Twitty's Grace Hits album from 1960 with the gatefold, the back cover picture is from the same photo shoot. If you look hard enough, you can make out the blonde blurred out in the photo who is standing next to him on the Grace Hits album. You can almost make out the lake as there is a slight transition from green to blue. Taking a look at the vinyl, K13034. It's driving me wild. The Cashbox review for this pair of sales heavyweights said that they were loaded with chart-making ingredients. They were a little close with their prediction. It's driving me wild would not chart. And Sweet Sorrel got so, so, so close to the Billboard Hot 100. Number 107 on October 16th, 1961. We find ourselves with a special disc jockey record. It's driving me wild with our cartoon cat friend and the flip side with Sweet Sorrow. Now the last single we'll look at is Portrait of a Fool and Tower of Tears. It's the first time since Lonely Blue Boy that the album title was a single. Looking at the dead wax, we have a zaggy looking ass. This was also a symbol for depressing plant in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Both songs will get rave reviews from Cashbox, their pick of the week, and Billboard, four stars for each, but as luck would have it, only Portrait of the Fool would find the charts. It would spend two brief weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 at number 98. Even with just a brief chart showing, the songs would get their own special disc jockey record. Portrait of a Fool would also land on MGM Records' promotional LP series, Parade of Hits. See this purple beauty with all songs kind of just thrown around the cover? Conway is orange and in the center of this side. Flipping over, they just shuffle the songs around. Conway is now in light purple on the bottom row. This parade would be a billboard pick. Looking quickly at the vinyl for Parade of Hits, you will see the label layout is the same as other albums with the standard logo. Though the artist's names and writing credits have more of a Times New Roman font, differing from the song titles. Portrait of Fool is song number five here on side one. Flipping over, we see the same layout treatment. We have finally reached the album. You can see how much vinyl was related to this album compared to the last one, the Conway Twitty Touch. Geez, they really tried to make an impact with this one. 
Now looking at the mono cover, a familiar photo with a blue tint. It's the same one from the Grace Hits back cover, and more recently, the Drive Me Wild Sweet Sorrow picture sleeve. The shirt really gives it away. But then, we also see the lake and a young lady blurred in the background. We also have the list of songs here too. Catalog number is in the bottom corner, E4019. While most people in discography lists have the title as Portrait of a Fool, technically it's Conway Twitty Sings Portrait of a Fool. If we look at the spine of the album, we can see that clearly. How quickly the word sings got omitted when referring to this album. On the back, you see the title across the top, songs on the right, and a summary about Conway from Billboard Music Week on the left. So we established that the title was Conway Twitty Sings Portrait of a Fool. Now, looking at the vinyl label, it says Conway Twitty Sings Portrait of a Fool and others. Oh, this album has an identity crisis. Among the list of songs, we see Walk On By. It's the Leroy Van Dyke hit from a year earlier. It would be Leroy's most successful song as it stayed at number one for 19 weeks on the country charts. Flipping over to side two, we have a couple of Conway written tunes, Tower of Tears and The Flame. Looking at the stereo cover, we see the artwork has once again shifted down and the SE419 is in the upper left, along with the bold stereo warding in the upper right. Looking a little closer, you'll see that by shifting the image, we see a little more of the building that is behind Conway. On the back, nothing different here, now that all the mono and stereo share the same template. Finally, looking at the stereo vinyl, we see the stereo on the left, and the 45-45 stereo disc on the right. That'll soon be disappearing from the labels, so make sure you subscribe to see our next episode. Also notice there is more spacing between the songs, the lettering is smaller, there's a hyphen between the song title and the time, the time is also now in parentheses, the BMIs and ASCAPs are also in parentheses, and on side two, BMI is only shown once at the bottom. It's after every song on the mono. Well, that does it for another episode. The best way to let us know you're enjoying the show is to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss our next episode. Also, hit that like button too while you're at it.